Greetings, my fellow Shek. Radamon here. Thank you for tuning in to Kenshi Shek's Conquest, Episode 30, First Batch of Armor. Whatever the case may be, it's, it's kind of funny. All right, Larry. I'm really excited to get these books back, and then I'll have you guys vote on uh, how I invest the books when I get them. Because I obviously have more books to... Uh, and maybe I can start voting on that. So two of the books is going to be for steel and robotics. Um, and then how many books we have left? Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I have nine books. So we'll have seven left and we can pick on how we invest them. So uh, I'm going to put down some... Uh-oh, uh-oh, hold on. Ah, oh, no, 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 no. I'm getting mugged. Run. Once these guys are safe, I'll put down some options. I just don't want to get mugged, bleed out, and die. Carrying the uh, treasure galleon of 40,000 worth of ancient science books. That wouldn't be good. Oh, boy. And a bunch of slave mongers in front of me? Hey, slave mongers. Go fight the uh, desert dust people. Okay, they stopped following me, so that's good. Slowest person is still Larry. And Larry, bring us down to the way station. So I have seven books left, and here's what I could research. Um, obviously, I'm not going to be able to afford tech level five, because that costs eight total. Uh, I don't... Well, we're going to get robotics. I'm not going to bother with the mounted turrets, because I don't need them yet. Heavy Generator and Advanced Wind, I guess, are options. Maybe not great options, but I'll include them. So, what research should I get? And JD, thanks for the reset. So, the reason these aren't great options is you can always just make more wind generators. You don't need uh, to make really, really good ones. There's Automatic Flower... Um, what else? There is ore drills, so automatic ore drilling. I'm going to ignore some of these because they're just not worth, um, There's, um, advanced weapon smithing. So advanced weapon smithing would allow me to make better weapons, but it would require me to use fabric in that process. There's chain armor, which would be good for, um, shirts, chain shirts and the like, uh, advanced weapon grades. Which would, again, paired with advanced weapon smithing, would allow me to make better um, advanced splints. Oh, you know what? I'm going to be out of space. So I'm just going to include these seven. Actually, I'm going to get rid of some of these options. I'm going to get rid of heavy generator. Yeah, I'm going to shred some of these options so that I can open it up. Uh, advanced medicine. Advanced splints. And we'll pick from that list there. This list of six. Kyle, thanks for uh, sneaking on by and dropping a resub. Or a sub. Cheers to that, buddy. And it's super delayed. <laughs> My alerts. All right, Larry. Now you can start running home. Try to avoid dust bosses. And dust patrols. Right, just checking in on home. Load the building, please. Q, 
Chemo is probably very close to Specialist. Yep, one, one point away. So very, very, very close to being able to start Armorsmithing. Obviously, this is a long time coming. Trapper Keeper is already starting to replace the blades. So the lower quality ones I'm just going to up and sell because I don't intend to keep them. And then the count one quality I'll keep for the Rockvin newbies who are going to need them. I wish he didn't get a bounty on his head. But fortunately, King's bounty on his head is not so bad because he's also going to be far and above the fastest member of our squad in a minute. Another thing to note with this list, I'm going to have seven extra books. Some of these, most of those choices there only cost one book, so multiple ones of those are going to be able to be queued up. Um, sorry for that, camera work. Oh, yeah, ah, more bandits. We're pretty close to the Dust Boss's um, base, which is why I'm uh, getting jumped. King got a bounty? Yeah, he didn't really deserve a bounty, to be honest. Not to spoil it for you for the YouTube episodes. It was more of a te technicality and less of a you deserve this. But he's wanted for terrorism um, for the United Cities. And his bounty just hit the 10k mark, which means it doesn't ever go away. So, good job, King. You are a terrorist. Oh, Rockfin. Hang on, let me uh, go up to you. There is more hemp to be hemped. I'm just going to have him put away his other stuff, so freeing up bag space. And here we are. The moment of truth. The legging about to happen. Yeah, just a sec. All right, Larry, would you be so kind as to deliver a leg to Kang? So he's going from this stubby nubby to advanced bionics. So he went from 15 miles an hour to 32. <laughs> yeah! 32 miles an hour is about the maximum speed of a big thing. So he can just about outrun a beak thing now. Awesome. And also, it, the quality is high enough that his left leg has a durability of about 130, which is five points uh, higher than organic. So he also runs at 32 miles an hour, which is like Greyhound territory. Um, Greyhound's probably maxed out around 40, if I was to guess. So not quite Greyhound territory, but he's fast. With two scout legs, he could obviously be faster. Hivers with two scout legs can get up to like 52 miles an hour, something like that. So we're talking like near cheetah speed, like gazelle speed. But yeah, um, not slow boys. He is not a slow boy no more. He's the new courier. He was always the courier. <laughs> he lost a leg because he was the courier. He lost it in the line of couriering. All right. And then the, uh, the rest of the... Uh, hey, Ruckman, are you going to actually do your job? Yeah. Cool. Good. Uh, the rest of these guys are going to go drop their science books off, and then I'm going to start researching in the order of priority that you guys have set forth. That's our nine books. 
Grizor, I guess we didn't even trust you with a book. Um, these guys here, some of them are hurt. And then I'm probably going to have them go running pointlessly. Just because they need to level up their athletics to be able to keep up with everybody else. So, Mr. Rockvin, what are we researching? We're going to research um, the requirements for robotics first. So let's go get uh, steel. And then robotics. And then let's take a look at the pole. So the next up would be ore drill and weaponsmithing. So we'll do that. Ore drill. That costs two. And then advanced weaponsmithing costs one. And that leaves us with three, four books left, which gives chain armor, which costs three. And then the last one goes to weapons grades, I guess. That's all the books. We're broke. Science broke. Cool. I'm very excited about that. Uh, Kimo, have you hit 60? You have. Armor quality high. All right. So let's get Kimo to stop doing leather crafting and start actually working the heavy armor smithy. And he is going to start making white plate armor out of the armor plates that Turt has been hammering and the fabrics that Rockfin's been delivering. Um, sort of delivering. And Rain and uh, Giso has been farming. Actually, Giso is not currently farming him because he's been currying, but still. Kelly, you are looking as broken as ever, my friend. Oh, and then, um, King, it's going to be important for you to courier the copper, because we're just about out of electrical components up here. And yeah, we have white plate for now. We might try to desert, diversify to other stuff, uh, depending on what we can afford and what we unlock, but, um, white plate jackets. I'm going to ignore the boots for a bit. And the reason I'm ignoring the boots is the sandals will help with run speed and also help with combat speed effect to allow us to attack faster to level up um, dexterity even more. But eventually, once our dex is up in some comfortable range, not yet determined range, but some comfortable range, we'll switch over to boots as well so our legs don't get cut off. Because if Kang had better pants and better boots and actual boots, uh, he may have not become a amputee. And although it benefits him to become an amputee, we're actually trying to avoid it. And there we go. That's all the money they have. So you get to run out to the high village. Seems like the vendors reset on alternate days. Yeah, something like that. I don't know. They reset when they want to reset. They're weird. So the newbies... We'll get you outfitted with weapons. I also still need to sell that nubbin of a leg. Tilk, where'd you go? Oh, one ton food bin. The trapper keeper has another blade on him. I'm gonna have him give up two of his blades because he's just gonna keep the next one. So that's Trustin's blade. Gizor's his blade. Done. So Glitch, Gizor, and Trapper Keeper need blades. That's pretty good. Uh, these... These guys are going to follow Trustin. And they're going to patrol. Um, where are they patrolling? Oh, I don't know. They're just going to do some running around to level up athletics. Their athletics is about in the 20s. Tilks is a little bit higher at 20, uh, 39. But compared to the rest of everybody else, uh, the s lowest athletics of the main group is 55, maybe. Most people are in their 70s and 60s. So, knowing that, um, these newbies really do need to train up their athletics to be able to uh, you know, get up to the speed that the rest of us are. Can you make crossbows? Um, 
yes, I could, but I won't. Uh, the Shek aren't... I'm not... We only have one person in our entire group that is ever going to wield a crossbow. So I'm not even going to bother uh, getting the, uh, the the tech for it. As it's not, it's something that we'll never really use. Uh, for rope-like reasons. Headshot's the only one that's allowed to even use a crossbow, so... Given that restriction, uh, there's really no point in making them. You don't necessarily... Glitch, you don't necessarily need to use uh, the katana, because wakasasis are just as good as katanas for training decks. But, um... Just to make it easy, everybody's going to have katanas until they're, they're good and ready. And... Let's have uh, Trustin and his group of athletics trainers... Oh, Glitch, you really fell behind. Um, you're going to run out to AdMag and check that for recruits. Glitch is far back, but I'm keeping a close eye on whether or not they're getting attacked. So... I'll just be... Uh, Making sure that they, their squad tab doesn't uh, doesn't glow. Yeah, you're now the trainees. Is it a promotion? Oh, I don't know. We'll pretend it is. Good motivation to keep up. Yeah, don't, don't fall behind, or you're get munched. Is it a Wakashashi Katana? So, yeah, there are Katana Katanas. It's a Katana class. So there's the class of Katana, and then there's the weapon Katana. I know it's confusing, but... The class of Katanas would be Wakashashis, Katanas, Toppers... Um, there's a few other Katana class weapons as well. There's, like, the Dai Katana, or whatever the longer Katana is. Um, that uh, Rockfin had for a bit. But just to make it easy, everybody's going to use Katana Katanas and not differentiate too much. Um, just because it gets confusing. It's easier to train them that way. Whoa, we are out of raw iron up here. It's good that uh, Kang is making a, a trip. That means Turd has been doing a really good job of uh, plate slamming. So if you take a look at the, oh, yeah, we also have too many plates. If you take a look at the stats here, you can see the different class of weapons on the left. Katanas, sabers, hackers, heavy weapons, blunts, and pole arms. Those are the, the six classes of weapons. And then you can also include crossbows, which is a seventh, and martial arts, which is an eighth. So there's really just eight types of uh, ways to attack enemies. Those eight, and that's it. Um... So we're just trying to maximize the the sort of skills for dexterity. So to raise dexterity, oh, the trainees are under attack. To raise dexterity, the only really important thing to note is that you need to use bladed weapons that have a very high um, cutting to blunt ratio. So the ratio for katanas is perfect because it's 0.81 cut, zero blunt. It does no blunt damage, which means that using a katana trains your dexterity uh, basically perfectly. There are some weapons that I have equipped here. The same is true of wakasashis. Wakasashis is also a perfect ratio of cutting to blunt. Some of the weapons that I have equipped uh, have a little bit of blunt damage. So if we take a look at... Um, uh, who had the chop sabers... Fully? Fully has a saber. So his ratio is 0.81 to 0.18. So he's building up his dexterity a little bit slower than everybody else's. And actually, you can kind of tell that. So if we take a look at Fully's dex, it's 17. Compared to like 20 or 
um, you know, 21. He, he's building up decks statistically a little bit slower, but not so much that it matters to me because it's fast enough. Uh, yeah. I'm buying some wheat straw to help uh, get more bread. I'll keep buying some more. You can outrun me. I can run you down, hive boy. All right, that's that's good enough. Uh, taking a look at the trainees, I forgot to give them food. Uh, so guess what? You're running back to me now. <laughs> They're like, put put. Hey, just training your athletics. That's all I'm doing. We're running fairly low on food, so at some point I'm probably have Kane go over to the Hivers to buy uh, bulk fish, so that I don't have to divert forces to go clear um, turtles. It's just out of convenience. Obviously, it's more economical to to hunt my own. So we have now unlocked robotics. So with robotics and steel, uh, let me let me show you these industries. So there is a steel refinery uh, that I can make, that I will make out here in this spot. And then we'll put uh, steel storage, uh, what is it called, steel bars? I'm blind. Steel bars, there it is. And uh, Kane can help build that. So that will make steel bars uh, for robotics and for better weapons. Uh, Rockvin, don't engineer. Just go back to research. And then in terms of the robotics, uh, robotics are actually slightly complicated because there's a lot of robotic parts um, that go into, you know, prosthetics or, or uh, limbs. So, I'm probably not immediately going to start that craft tree, only because um, I only really want to make my industry on one floor, and I'm kind of out of space, but uh, that would be a robotics bench. Oh, my frame rate. What the heck just happened? That would be a robotics bench here. <laughs> Let me pause for a second just to show you. So... Crafting robotics bench and it robotics require uh, like I said a lot of different components. So if you want to make robotics efficiently, you're probably going to have like two or three benches at a time. Uh, I also have medical workbench to be able to take advantage of the medical stuff that I can make. And there's a bunch of other workbenches I don't have here as well. Uh, soon the chain armor workbench, but I don't have any blueprints that get unlocked from that, so it doesn't really matter to me. And here is our first white plate jacket. Nice. And, uh, hey, Rockvin, you get to wear that. Now, one of the issues that we're going to have with these white plate jackets uh, is simple. Most of our recruits literally aren't strong enough to wear them. They will become encumbered by wearing them. So that's, uh, that's going to be a pain point for sure, is that... Uh, we're, we're too weak. <laughs> Which is pretty funny to me. Hey, Bone Dog. Don't chop Trapper Keeper up so much, because if you chop Trapper Keeper up, uh, Trapper Keeper then needs to go rest, or else the quality of the crafts <laughs> get decreased. Buy another building? No, no. I, I said at the start of the stream, I am not expanding. I'm not using the second floor. I'm just, this is it. I'm not adding to it. I don't want uh, to expand for my own reasons. So. What you see is what you get.
I'm purposely bottlenecking us so that we are encouraged to uh, progress to a base sooner or later. And we'll, I think once um, a lot of us are wearing... Oh, once a lot of us are wearing the, the proper sort of armor, um, we'll be able to take bases out over. So, one of the advantages is white plate jackets. Let's take a look. Obviously, um, dodging and dexterity kind of hurts, as does martial arts, but it does cover 100% arms, 100% stomach, 100% chest, and gives acid protection, which would be particularly useful if going to the scrap house again. Um, it's... It's technically leather armor, even though it says plate jacket. And then here is what it looks like. Zoom it in. Looks a little strange with my prosthetic arm, but yeah. <clears throat> Alright, so here comes the trainees again. And then let's go bring Kang to... I'm going to bring him to uh, to sell some stuff for fish. Uh, once I move out, I'm going to be moving out entirely. I won't be keeping any of the infrastructure or anything. Once we're out of here, we're out of here for good. I'm not using. I won't be using the hub. Alright, King, how about just sell some cactus? I know it doesn't yield money, but, like, we have a, just an obscene amount of it. And you guys fought. Of course you did. I... Ugh. Just run! You guys aren't fighters. You're the trainees for a uh, good reason. Alright, so it looks like Glitch has a leg injury, and he's not going to really be able to run. But even then, Glitch can just about outrun the Dust Bandits because they're so dang slow. Builds up your toughness. So now these guys are mid-30s, low-40s for athletics for some of them. Which is uh, some good gains for not spending that much time on it. And I'll run out to the rest of the group. So if the rest of the group... Um, you know, if these dust bandits don't leave me alone, they get chewed up by the uh, the rest. Ooh, I think there's a big thing nest here. No, it's actually a dust bandit camp. Those dust bandits are idiots. Don't make camp where the beat things are. Because all you're doing are feeding the beat things. So these cacti barely sell for anything. But it's a good way. The, the reason I'm selling them is it's a really good way for me to train my farming skill for my farmers. Because they'll then spend the time... Um, Mining more cactus, or mining, farming more cactus, leveling up their farming skill. And I bought all their fish, and I also bought uh, two lanterns, which you'll see used in a minute. Glitch, don't let them hit your head. Alright, here we go. You done made mistakes, guys. Flop. Okay, ore drill is now researched, which is going to allow me to mine. And ore drills work a little bit different than the way I was mining previously. So the way they work is you have iron, um, like iron percents, and you can just pick where you want to build the drill, which is a lot more convenient than just trying to mine the actual nodes. Now, the drill itself um, is pretty efficient and gets more efficient with uh, higher tech levels. So there's some advantages there uh, where later on it actually could become fully automatic if you unlock the tech. So, you know, there's some real big benefits to mining mass iron. And yeah, there's no copper, automatic copper, uh, but, you know, this, this is pretty good. So I think what I'm going to do is, Kang, you're going to run this these lanterns up to Trapper Keeper and Chemo, because they are the crafters that need to really craft high quality. And the advantage of these lanterns is during dusk and dawn, when the lights go out, 
uh, this will stop that disadvantage. That Stop that uh, craft quality penalty. Oh, come on. So there, it's on the belt, and they're producing their own like light source now. Which is also good in the dark. And then it looks like, Kimo, you have another plate jacket. Drop that, and Kang, you get this one. The, uh... Those that lost limbs loot first. You've given the most to the team. I think, uh, I don't think anyone's gonna argue with that. Plus, uh, Kang and Rockfin are particularly strong. They're stronger than most of the other members, so they have the physical ability to, uh, to use it, to carry it. Oh, and Kang, you want to sell your own leg? Your old leg? I don't know what you do with your old legs, but we'll have you sell that one, too. So, glitch. Here's your blade, and then Greaser needs the last one, so we're almost done making the uh, the katanas. Just one more for Trapper Keeper to have. Where is Greaser? Oh no! But very happy that my uh, my armor's rolling off the line. That's really cool. And there's the advanced weapon smithing just got researched, uh, which would allow me to upgrade my weapon smith. Which I will do once I get this last blade done. Um, King, let's go sell your old leg. Happily. I'm not going to keep the nubbin for an old, uh, a rainy day. I'm hoping just to make my own. So we're up to 2k. And now he's just going to run errands for me. Buy in more food and just making the, uh... Oh, bandit raid coming against me. Is it a dust bandit raid? It is. So here's something interesting. Gleaning a little information. So if I go to factions here, you can see that the Black Dragon Ninjas are the upcoming raid event. And they left from this tower here. As you can see, here's their raid. Their origin raid. Um, very clearly they originated from this spot, which kind of means that you know where the Black Dragon Tower is, because they just sort of showed us. Uh, yes, it's a little strange that we can see traffic details from, like, kilometers away, but that's just how the game works. So, you know, we get to glean that information, I suppose. So, we know where they are. And, um... It's also true, if there was a Dust Bandit raid, they would have originated from the Dust Bandit spot. Uh, Rain? Are you not tending to the wheat farm anymore? Operate wheat farm. Oh, we're out of water. Oh, dang. I didn't realize that. Uh, well, there's, like, way too much water over here. So let's... Comrade, let's distribute the wealth. I think what I think uh, what's happening now is I have too many farms for my crummy well, and I probably need to upgrade the quality of the well, and I'll I'll get around to doing that soon. Because I I need to power it up too. I need more wind generators. So that's the steel bar storage. Only stores 25 bars. It's a pretty low amount. And then here is the refinery, uh, which I'm probably going to want to keep powered off for now. In terms of research, we have gotten through everything but the advanced weapon grades and the chain armor. Uh, so it's going to be really interesting to upgrade this weaponsmith soon. Uh, we're not quite there yet. And then Kimo is about to roll the third plate jacket off the line. And I'm going to be giving it uh, in the order of the people that can actually equip it. So it's not like first come, first serve. There's no particular order. It's basically he who can actually use it uh, strength-wise will, will have it. Oh! Hey there! You're catching me at the very end of my stream, but welcome. Thank you for the, uh, the raid. Uh, Dune Raven? Dune Raven, tell me about your uh, Kenshi series. Mine is a shack only roleplay series. Oh, don't worry about it. Better late than never. And I appreciate the raid. 
So welcome, Raiders. Here, I'll. This is my uh, mascot for those that do not know. He turns around. My Mister, the Overlord Yoda. <laughs> And uh, currently, we're just uh, we're just living out of the edge of the hub, and uh, investing some love into training and 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 the like. We're very very poor. Um, purpose almost almost to a point. I'm keeping myself poor for uh, role play reasons, but we are trying to invest in the arms and armor to be able to start our own base which is probably going to be next stream as I'm just about out of time. Couldn't be this one. How are you Raiders doing? And uh, what were you up to over on your stream? I'm going to be going a little late because I started a little late. I had some technical slowdowns at the start. We don't speak about those, right? And Chemo's done with yet another white plate jacket. Uh, this one will go to, let's say, Ruka. Huge improvement from a stolen shoddy heart protector, I think. Yeah, keeping myself poor by not exploiting uh, stealth mechanics, exactly. I'm not stealing really anything. Battle loot only, right? That does definitely keep you poor. Alright, King is looking for some more stuff to sell. We have 18 electrical components. That will do. And I'm just, uh, I'm just supplementing our, um... You know, our people with, uh, food. So speaking of food, I think these guys, these trainees are all healed up. Uh, but I'm not going to have them go on a training march just yet. No ROTC for them. Because just about out of time. And this store got restocked full of money. This barman here is just buying my all of my junk. He's rude the day he ever met me. <laughs> Eight PM shut her down game. No, I'll go a little longer. Just make sure you get the full five hours. No one should accuse me of skimping, right? <laughs> so there's additional advanced weapon grades. I do believe that Trapper Keeper probably has a blade for himself. He does. He does. So at this point, I think. What I'll do to end out is to upgrade the Weaponsmith, to show you the Tier 2 Weaponsmith, which means um, Rockvin here is going to grab some plates and help smith this thing. Because I'm interested in, in showing you uh, the, the boon, the advantage. Because the possible quality of the weapons we have available to us will uh, obviously go up pretty sizably. Uh, Kane, can you help out up here too? God, he's fast. Look at him. Like twice as fast as everyone else. King, Rockfin. Did you put your plates away? Why would you do that? This is the most people you've ever seen watching Kenshi? <laughs> is a lot. You guys are awesome. Trapper Keeper, get back here. So Trapper Keeper is a Weaponsmith 72. He's able to make a Cat 1 quality. No, that's not true. He's able to make better than that. You lie to me. And Duna Raven, thank you for the follow. Oh, Duna Raven, I appreciate it. And I'll have to check you out, too. All right, so here we go. Um, this is what I was warning you about. Once you have a uh, Weaponsmith Tier 2, it starts to require fabrics. Uh, but the advantage is... Let's cancel this blade, even though we have some progress on it. The advantage is, we're going from um, refitted blades to Cat 2 blades. 
So I'm gonna end with making one of these Cat 2 blades. Trapper Keeper is freaking out right now. There he goes. And we're gonna get... We're gonna get our first nice blade out as sort of the end mark. Uh, I'll work till to that. So we're gonna have... Um, Kang make sure that the the blades and the fabric doesn't run dry. That will be his task. Grabbing the hemp. I cannot wait to actually have a real base. And just to reiterate, because I know I get asked a lot, I am waiting until I'm able to defend my own territory. That will be the point to which I create my own base. I'm not going to jump the gun and need to rely on mercenaries or any other benefactors. I'm waiting to be able to defend myself. That will be the threshold of base making. Oh, Kimo has another one. Um... Saruka so has hers. Brain, I guess this is yours. And we're definitely armoring up. Pretty good. We're also going to want to armor up our heads too, but the, the helmets that we have on now are pretty comparable to... Uh, they're pretty comparable to better helmets, right? Because these helmets here do cover 90%. So 10% of the attacks won't be deflected, which is a problem. But most of the attacks do get deflected, which means that we benefit a lot more upgrading our armor from the 50% really terrible resistance up to the 100% and pretty reasonable for blunt cut and cut resistance efficiency. So it, it it's way more to gain um, with the uh, upgrading the armor than the helmets. So Trapper Keeper, you are... Our end goal here. How is it going with your swordsmithing? So he's about two thirds of the way done. We're almost there. And Kang is running at 32 miles an hour out to the Hivers to try to buy some more fish because we are getting hungry. Feeding Shacks suck. If you're doing your own skeleton series, obviously skeletons don't eat. I could see the uh, I could see the glory in that. <laughs> Having to feed these guys, oof, it's expensive. Kenshi two is a thing. It's not just speculation. It's uh, it's in development, one hundred percent. Whether the development sees through to completion, I cannot say. But I know that it's not just speculation. Fish, yeah? Om nom. Oh, someone's under attack. Oh, the uh, the black dragons. You know what? Uh, that That's the good ending spot. Everybody, gather around. We got some black dragons to, uh, to smush into the ground. So, jobs are off. Jobs are off, except for you, Trapper Keeper. Unless, unless you've finished that blade. No, you have not. Get back to work. I'm going to set him to weapon on and passive. And then everybody else is going to converge. Uh, I'm also being attacked by dust bandits. So this is going to be a little spicy because it's a two-way battle. But I'm, I'm up for it. I'll probably lose. Oh no, there's really not a lot of black dragons. Never mind, I'm not going to lose. Now, what's really curious... Oh, Rockvin. What are you, just spectating? All of you guys. Come on, guys. No spectators in battle. So you'll also see that the hits that um, the people that are wearing armor take, it will be reduced. Uh, if these enemies ever land hits. And where are the black dragons? Where do they end up going? I don't even see them. They buzz off. Am I based at the hub? No, I'm just temporarily at the hub. This is uh this is just as a means to an end. Eventually I'll build a real base. I'm role-playing a series as we are a splinter faction of the Shack that believe that Asada and all the other splinter factions of the Shack are wrong, 
and that um, Shagger, the last leader of the Shek, and his war against the Holy Nation was a just cause. So if you don't know um, Tenchi lore, essentially what happened was Asada is currently the... not undisputed, but currently the leader of the Shek. She's disputed because you have the Berserkers, you have uh, Flying Bull, Ghost, and... Um, um, what's her name? Um, that, you know, splintered off into their own separate factions. Um, so Asada overthrew Shagger, the last leader of the Shek, because she was worried that the Shek's population loss due to war was going to bring about the downfall of the Shek. And what ended up happening? Where did this raid go? Where are these black dragons? Oh, they're just, they're just, get away from my fish. So Asada overthrew Shagger to stop the war against the Shek, and we believe that Shagger was right, and that war should never have been stopped, so we're looking to overthrow not only Asada, but all the other splinter factions, you know, Flying Bull and, and Ghost and whatever the last one's name is. Hold on. I can... Uh, Tora the Fearless, that's, that's her name. Uh, we're looking to overthrow them, and this is all role-playing, and this is all storytelling. This is not min-maxing or any of that. So, I have a base location picked out, and hopefully we'll settle in no problem. Trapper Keeper. Uh, Cat 2 Blade, there it is. So, 9.90 .90 cutting damage on that katana, and that's actually low balling. Uh, we'll probably even make a better one uh, soon. Unlocking higher stats and all that. So, Black Dragons are all dead. And everybody's going back to work. And that is where I'm going to end the stream for all of you, sadly. Well, thank you for hanging out for the five hours and change. Um, we did get a whole lot done. I wanted to get more done, but we are, of course, now officially rolling out uh, properly good weapons. You know, up to Cat 2 weapons. And we are also... Why is there a goat in my base? Who invited you here? Uh, we are also making high-grade white plate jackets with Chemo likely to kick that up into the specialist. Well, he's 17 points away from specialist, but that's still pretty good. Uh, next stream, very likely to get more arms and armor. And once I feel sufficiently armored, I'll have you all vote on a poll, but probably pull the trigger on a permanent base location so that I don't have to figure out the nonsense logistics of sort of halfway living in the hub, halfway not. Thank you for watching Kenshi Shex Conquest, which originally streamed live on Twitch November 4th. If you have any feedback or questions for me, please let me know in the comments below. If you would like to catch a live stream of mine, Radamont.com has my stream schedule and countdown timers to upcoming streams. Thank you so very much to my Twitch subscribers, for which the characters in the series are named after, and my Patreon patrons. Without you all, my channel would simply not exist. I will catch you next episode or an upcoming stream. Farewell, my fellow Shek. <laughs>